said, well, welcome to my class, Living with a Pet Rabbit. Um, you guys both have bunnies? Yes. So is it your first rabbit? Or you have bunnies before? Yep, no. It's the first bunnies, but we have four. We got Number four? We got two, no, we have one, and then another one, and then two more. I told you. In a very short time. I did the same thing. <laughs> I had started with two, and then I got another one, and then I got another one. My other, my two are false for failure. You got one too? Is it your first round? We had one and then we got another one. So you have two? Yeah, these are our first buddies. And your first buddies. Okay, well, I promise you there's going to be so much information thrown at you here that this is just the beginning of your journey. Learning about rabbits is a journey. It, it takes many years. You're not going to learn it in one book. You're not going to learn it in one class. Uh, it's going to take a lot of effort actually on your part. It's not going to come to you naturally. I run into people all the time who've had rabbits for 20 years and don't know any more than they had when they got the first one because a rabbit is not going to teach you this stuff. It's like trying to learn about kids from a two-year-old. You're not going to learn about children. You need to take a step back and do some homework. And so, uh, I, you can purchase a copy of my book here. That's in gratuitous promotion there. <laughs> but, uh, Go uh, online. There's plenty of websites out there. There's a lot of, of, of good books you could read. There's some not so great books you could read, but there's a lot of information. And so I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of the most important critical things. Some of the more advanced subjects we're probably not going to have time for today are going to be rabbit grooming, rabbit socializing, training your rabbit, things like that. Those are a little more advanced subjects. My rabbits all come in and call. They all go to their condo when it's time to go to bed at night. I don't chase them around and say, oh, it's bedtime, and run around with a broom trying to get my rabbits to go in their ex tent or whatever. Mine literally are waiting in front of their condo. They go to bed at 9 o'clock. At a quarter to 9, they're standing there by. You see the time? They are waiting. You could train your rabbits. So these are the dead subjects, and if we have some time, I'll talk a little about those. But the first thing I want to talk about today is why rabbits need to live indoors. And that's really important because we have a confusion in society today of what the difference between a pet rabbit and a farm rabbit is. Okay, Farm rabbits are different. They're, they're not long for this earth. The average lifespan of a farm rabbit is six months. Uh, they pump them full of pellets, they get them big, and then they, you know, they're, they're going to be exploited for their fur or their meat or, or whatever. Uh, pet rabbits are not even in the same category. Pet rabbits are going to live 10 to 15 years. They're a companion, just like a dog or a cat. They interact with you on a daily basis. So they you love. They you you play with them. They play with you. Maybe a little different than a dog or a cat, but very similar in a lot of ways. And uh, so uh, it's important that rabbits live indoors for their safety and their health. Rabbits are prey animals. Dogs and cats are predators. So predators go out and kill other predators, but everything out there will eat a rabbit. And we've got a lot of predators in San Diego County. We have um, owls, uh, hawks, coyotes. There's nowhere in the area that, that's, that's free of these. I lost a cat a couple years ago to a coyote. I live west of I-5 in Oceanside. That was a strip. Bless you. Right there near the beach. And there are coyotes in our neighborhood. Hawks fly over my house all the time. They can swoop down and pick up a rabbit. Uh, hawks can lift up to eight. Most rabbits are not eight pounds. This rabbit here is about a five or six pound rabbit. That rabbit is gone the hot season, and they will hit it and, and carry it off. So we have a lot of predators. We've got to have our bunnies protected indoors. They live more than twice as long indoors as outdoors, which you may already know. But they um, are our pets. So they're our their caregivers. We're their companions. Uh, the most important reason why rabbits live indoors is so much longer indoors than, than outdoors is they uh, hide the fact that they're sick from predators. And when your rabbit becomes sick, if you're not close to him and in, interacting with him on several times a day, he could be dead before you ever know that he was ill. And this happens very, very often. Rabbits have conditions such as GI stasis or bloat um, that come on fairly quickly, and if they're not diagnosed and treated, relatively quickly they could be fatal. So 
when your bunny is in your home and you've got a routine you're going through, your bunny gets his salad at 3 o'clock each day, and at a quarter to 3, he's sitting there waiting. One day you come out and you put his salad down and he's not there waiting. This is not an issue of, I think he's sick, he's not sick, he's, he's not well, something's wrong. Now you've got to act on it. And we'll talk a lot about that at the end, uh, at the very end of the class, because this is where you're going to make the most difference in your rabbit's life, saving his life someday if he is ill. A lot of folks will go, oh, I don't know, and, or, oh, let's not rush into that. That's going to be another big deal. Well, you know, it's that reluctance that costs a lot of problems in their lives. Uh, it's part of what makes rabbits high maintenance expensive pets. I mean, it's not the food or the ants and the bowls and the litter boxes that cost a lot of money. It's still darn vet bills. And I mean, they get pricey. I had a bunny, had to have staples uh, last July. 750 bucks. Now, that would be $150 on a dog. Put, you know, put them out for five minutes, put some staples in, and, and that's it. They go home. She wasn't at the vet's office for a couple of hours, and uh, oh, the goodness, 750 bucks. Okay. And you imagine if it was something serious, this was just like six days. So this is where you've got to be prepared. You had a child, you didn't uh, you have a tooth looked at, a tooth you're not going to go, oh God, I can't afford it to wait six months to fix. You find the money, and this is what we do with our, our fur kids. There is one called VPI that does take rabbits. Most of them don't take rabbits, but this is changing, I think. Rabbits are the third most popular pet. So they're, I think the, the church companies, as they see the need, will fill the need. Okay, um, the last thing I want to talk about why rabbits are indoors because there's a lot of parasites and disease outside that they're exposed to. I take my rabbits out regularly for social events, to the park, uh, out in the store for walks and all, but I'm very aware of things that can hurt them, such as um, uh, you want to avoid any kind of blood-sucking critters, mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas. If they bite a wild rabbit and bite your rabbit, they, wild rabbits are carriers of a disease called uh, mesomatosis. And it's a, a disease that was intentionally released into the wild by the Australians back in the, I believe it was the uh, 60s. And they had millions of rabbits overrunning the, uh, the country. They were, they were rabbits that had become feral. They were domestic rabbits and they had no predators. And there were millions of them. And I don't know. You may soon learn that rabbits are quite destructive. I mean, if they get into your garden, you have a ball. They're going to kill your rose bushes. They're going to kill anything that's growing. They will even kill your lawn. And so they were considered pests by the, uh, the public uh, when they get out of control. And there are many areas that still are dealing with rabbits as pests. And we have this issue out there now. Uh, uh, how, what do we do with feral rabbits? Because they can, if they don't have them, now, the predators keep them in check pretty much in this area here. There are places that don't. So, uh, that and fly strike is another serious problem. I just had a friend in Poway, uh, had five bunnies who all had this. And this is, she was letting them play in the backyard. And what happens is, if there's a moist area on your bunny, like around their eyes, their nose, uh, the flies will lay eggs there. And then maggots will hatch, and the maggots burrow under the skin and will literally have to be removed and it, it's an agonizing way for the bunny to go and it's a very common way for rabbits that live outdoors in, in backyard hutches to, to pass away. And we have it right here. It's not something that you're talking about some other part of the country. It's right here. Uh, you'll feel little bumps. Now, this is, you know, you have your bunny, you're, it's good to every day kind of you know, pick them up, feel him, you know, you're looking for those kind of things. And, this would happen. This, this family, they were feeling all these lumps and they went down in the fur and looked at it and they were moving. I saw these little like heads of worms sticking out and started pulling them out with tweezers and they were all worms coming out of the rabbit and they, they called me in a panic and I said, get them to the vet. I'm not a vet. What are you doing? So, you know, we've got to keep them indoors to keep them safe. Now, I tell folks the best thing to do with your rabbit is to go. Uh, not only develop a relationship with a vet, but to get a blood test. And rabbits have a very uh, wide range of, of uh, values in their blood test. 
And one of the first things your, your vet's going to do when your buddy comes in sick, he's going to take blood and he's going to try and diagnose from their blood what's going on. Well, if you don't have a baseline from which to operate, now your vet is just guessing. And some rabbits, are very, the, the, the ranges are so widely varied that sometimes uh, they're guessing this thing because it looks like it might be his liver or, or something. And it's not. And so when you have a baseline, now you don't, the vet will tell you to do it every year. I say, you know, every couple of years, get a blood test done with your examination. As your rabbit's younger, you can get away with going to the vet every two years when he's, say, up to six. Once a rabbit crosses into that seven, eight year old range, now he's starting to push seniorhood and becoming a senior rabbit. Senior rabbits need to see the vet more often. So now, after your rabbit gets to be six, seven, eight years old, now we want to start getting seen the vet every year, hopefully to catch anything that's coming along before it becomes serious. Um, and I, I've showed you here uh, typical costs of what things would cost. Actually, in this area, these prices are very low. This, I was trying to aim for the USA, and actually, it's vet bills here are more expensive than most other parts of the country. Uh, the cost of living is more expensive here than most other parts of the country. So you may look at these and, and, and see what it costs for a rabbit. Actually, like I said, these are quite low for our area, and it's going to be much more than that. Now, anybody got any questions before we move on? Because now, I mean, we're going, we're going through, uh, is a rabbit really the right pet for you? Now, of course, you already have rabbits, so it's a little late for that. But, you know, some families aren't a good match for rabbits. It just, they're not whole or not. They're, 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 uh, They've got young children who were very rowdy and rambunctious, and, and, and so not, I don't think everyone should have a bunny. Some people oh, you know, everyone should love a bunny. I don't know. I, I think that, you know, you need to be the right kind of person. You need to be mature. You can't discipline rabbits, so you can't be the kind of person that's going to blow a cork and your rabbit chews your wee corks because it's your fault. You've got to be the one to know that you left the corks there, not to okay. you know, the bunny's going to chew those cords. So if you, if you discipline your rabbit, he's going, to, he's going to hide from you, he's going to avoid you, and you're not going to get to interact with him, and he's going to lose trust in you. So uh, I recommend that rabbits get two to three hours a day of exercise and an hour a day of some kind of interaction with you. This is the part about having a rabbit that, that's fun. You want to learn what your bunny likes and doesn't like. He's going to show you how he wants his ears rubbed. He's going to, you know, you get down on his level is the best way to interact. You're going to go down to the floor. And, and if he runs from you, then what I recommend to people is put a pillow on the floor, watch TV, let the bunny approach you. He will come see what you're doing and all. And, and if you reach out to touch him, he may run away. It's okay. Just keep it up. Just be in his presence. Uh, Try and interact with him. Uh, get some of his toys. And like my bunny's favorite toy is one of these. And why? Because it makes noise. And he, my buddies all, every one of my four rabbits, every one of them will go and get this when they want my attention. And I'll, and I'll like that. Yeah. And I'll go look at them. And, and if I get this, and if I actually like. We'll toss it over to them, they'll pick it up and toss it back at me. And that's the kind of games that bunnies will play. I actually had a cat that used to like to play a string game. We'd throw a, a shoelace. We'd put a spool on the game and throw the shoelace. And my bunny, after watching the cat do this for years, decided that he wanted to play string too. And he would actually go and pick the string up and spool in his mouth. And he wouldn't know how to like pull on it, but he would pick it up and like set it down. And that was his version of playing the string game. So they will play with you. Just not quite like fetch like a dog, although I take the balls and I'll roll them at my bunny and, and they'll pick them up and toss them back at me if they're in the play or something. But don't go spending a lot of money on toys at Petco. The things that rabbits like are <laughs> toilet paper rolls. Toilet paper rolls and stuff. Now, you know, things to consider for a rabbit. I mean, if you have a friend, maybe who's sitting and getting a bunny. Or is anyone in the house? Is everybody in the house on board for the rabbit? I mean, they all want the bunny. Is anyone allergic to the rabbit? The uh, fur could be a problem for some folks, but the hay is actually what most people are allergic to, not the fur. Because people think, well, I'm allergic to cat fur. Well, the reason people are allergic to cat fur is they cats they it's the cat saliva that they're actually allergic to. Rabbits don't have that saliva. Uh, 
interaction with humans, but the dander is lighter than air. It does get on your nose, and it does bother some people. You know, do uh, you travel a lot? Are you home? You know, uh, a week and then gone for two weeks. Probably don't. A long time and a bunny. Those things, those type of things. Dogs and cats do get along with rabbits. By the way, people ask me this. That's the most common question I get. Is what about rabbits and dogs? What about rabbits and cats? Dogs and rabbits, cats and rabbits. It's not about the dog or the. I mean the, the, the rabbit. It's about the dog and the cat. If your dog chases squirrels, if he chases cats, he's going to probably chase your bunny. And most. Dogs are not trying to kill a rabbit when they end up injuring a rabbit. They're trying to play with them. And here's the uh, plane right here. And so uh, you need to know your dog and you need to be really honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. I had a friend of mine who was fostering a couple of bunnies. He found out this is this is sad. They were at a petting zoo, he rescued them, he just felt so bad for them. His mother and a daughter. He brought them to me to trim their toenails. I thought, oh my god, what, uh, this bunny's malhooded, the teeth, if they don't grow properly, they'll grow right out of their mouth. So this bunny had teeth sticking that far out of his mouth. I said, oh, okay. You've got to deal with this. So he had the teeth removed. That's about an eight or nine hundred dollar surgery. Then he had both bunnies stayed, which is about another eight hundred dollars a piece. This guy had like twenty four hundred dollars of these rabbits. He's serious about saving these two girls and getting them home. And uh, the maid came in one day, left the door open accidentally. His two Labrador retrievers came rushing in from the backyard and killed both rabbits. And he was crushed. I mean, not only did he have like twenty five hundred dollars in these rabbits, but he was he was going to save these money. And here they were better off at the petting zoo than they were at his home. And, it's, it is kind of ironic, but you know, it was a disaster waiting to happen. If you've got hunting dogs that are going to kill those rabbits on sight, are you, it, the rabbits are going to be around for 10, 15 years. The dogs are probably going to be around for 10 or 15 years. Are you going to be able to 24 7 be in between those critters? I mean, you know, accidents happen and things happen. And so, it, well, it, I, I don't know. Go, maybe that he should have never brought those bunnies into his home. I mean, you know, he was trying to do a good thing, but I don't think it ended up being a good thing. And so you have to be honest with yourself. You know, yeah, we love our animals and all, but if you if you're gonna bring an animal home to be killed or suffer from you know not happen, maybe that's not a good thing. And with cats, I have found that cats tend to only get jealous of the bunnies more than anything. And, and so I worry about the you know, what happens, my kids were always, would never go and harass the rabbit into my face. Would always do it behind my back, you know, so you gotta kind of wonder, you know, like when you're not there, is the kitty coming up and the bunny? Now my bunny used to beat my kitty up, so, you know, I... Now I'm gonna go quickly into, anybody have any questions about any of that? I know this is all, um, this was space towards folks that... I have a hand up. This was space towards folks that, you know, thinking about a bunny or wanting to get into a bunny, so I, I, I had wanted to cover all that stuff. Thank you. Sure.